All right, now this is the circuit for relay contactor on off and direction control. Now, if you have seen the video in our YouTube where we have a box and we are moving the box based on the actuation of limit switch, I'm going to explain how we can design the circuit for that. If you haven't seen that video, I can show you right now. So this is the video I was talking about. And in this video, we have this box and this is a limit switch. So when I click the limit switch, the direction of the motor changes. When this limit switch is actuated, direction changes again. So the box moves in left and right direction based on the limit switch actuation. So we can see that here. Direction changes and with this limit switch direction changes. Now there is no stop button. We are not pressing the stop as we were doing in the last video. Just by pressing the switch, the direction changes. These are the kind of push button as well. Okay, so how to make the circuit for that? In this case, I have just copy paste the last circuit and renamed the conductors. Now we have removed the push buttons from here. We have two limit switches. So we will take limit switch, limit switch contacts. Okay. And limit switch contacts somehow look like this. We will use normally open limit switch NO contact. If you notice in this NO contact, we have this part, you know, the symbol. This indicate that it's not a normal switch, but it's a limit switch contact. So connect this switch here instead of the push button and tag it with LS1. Okay. And here you take another switch and tag it as LS2. Okay. Just to make sure it is connected. All right. Now in this circuit, there is some problem. If suppose LS1 is latching forward two, LS2 cannot latch reverse 2 because there is an interlock here. But we need an interlock. So we have to shift the interlock, uh, this NC, from here to here. So what I'm going to do is, because if I run this circuit now, now in this circuit, I cannot actuate limit switch. I cannot simulate that. But you might imagine if I press this switch, this is going to latch the forward. Now the box will go here. If it press LS2, it will do nothing because there's a button there's an NC switch which will be open so LS2 cannot latch reverse 2 but we want that to happen so we will remove this interlock from here okay and we will take this interlock from here to here this will change the operation of our circuit okay this is another kind of interlock and it is similar to the old interlock in a way that it will change the contactor. Like if I press LS1 now, this will latch forward 2 and forward 2 will be running with the parallel. Now if I press LS2, this will energize my reverse 2. There is no NO switch here. So this reverse 2 is on. I'm sorry, I need to change this reverse from reverse 2. This is to forward 2. So, yeah. So if you latch LS1, because this is a coil, this will be open. So if our reverse 2 is latched, this will be unlatched. Similarly, if you latch reverse 2, this will be open. So if this was latched before, this will be unlatched. So this is again doing the interlocking, but in a different way. Okay, we are breaking the unlatching part in the parallel loop, not in the main loop, not in the series loop, in the parallel loop. That's what we have done. Okay. Now, just to take a trial, since I cannot press this LS1 and LS2, I will take some test buttons here to check the circuit. Okay. In reality, if you press the button, you know that switch will be closed, this will be latched. Since I don't have that part in this animation, I'm going to take this test button connect in parallel to my LS1. So this is, in a way, my LS1T, which is a test button. Okay. Similarly, I will take another one for LS2. I want that to be here. This is LS2, LS1, LS2T, LS2 test button. Okay, you don't have to have it, but just I'm doing it for explanation. All right, now let's have a look. If I press the main first, this is conductor three, I have to target with contactor three. 
similarly here and here. So this is large. Now here, let's see if it was LS1. My forward two is large. Okay, I have to change the tags again. I'm sorry for that. Forward two. And this is reverse two. This is forward two. Reverse two. Okay, now we have all the nice tags. <laughs> all right, once again, this is the main. And here, if LS1 is there in one direction, if LS2 is there in another direction, without pressing the stop button. So this is like changing the direction. This is what was happening in this video. With one switch, direction change. With another switch, direction change again. All right, so this is the exact circuit which we have made in our practical demonstration. Okay, this is the main stop. And if main and stop, the supply will be off. Even if this conductor is slash, if the main is off, motor will be stop. This is the stop for the directions. So in this circuit, you have one limit switch, another limit switch, stop button if you want, uh, main on, main off, and one emergency. It's totally up to you how, much, how many stop switches you want based on the location of your control systems. Okay, this is the main on. Okay, now you might be wondering, what if both limit switch are pressed together? Now in this circuit, both limit switch cannot be pressed together. That's for sure, because the box cannot, you know, just press two switches together. This is physically impossible. But in case if the user presses the both, both limit switch together, what will happen? This will again cause an accident. Because if I press this limit switch again here and here, like this one, for a moment, this will burn out the motor. Because if you notice, this is giving me the supply to forward. This is directly giving a supply to forward. This is giving supply to reverse. Both contacts, contactors are on. And you can see here, the lines are matching to each other. And this will be, this will cause an accident. So how to avoid that? To make to avoid this we have made the different circuit here we have introduced different types of interlock here to avoid that like this one this was the main this is the forward and this this is how we avoided it by having interlock here but if I use interlock here in our circuit of limit switches we cannot have direction change okay this is a tricky situation we need to have interlock here but we cannot have it because if we have it here, we cannot automatically change the direction. So how to provide, how to remove the possibility if a person presses two limit switch together because we always need to have some protection. All right, now the easiest way, now the easiest way to avoid uh, pressing the both limit switch together and to avoid the accident is to use the NC of limit switch in the series of NO of the another limit switch. So what you can do is if I take the contacts and if I show you the NC of a limit switch, which is somehow look like this. Okay, this is the NC one, NC of let's take LS2 and one NC of LS1. Okay, so you have to connect it in the series of LS1. Okay, and here as well, Okay, now the better would be if you connect it here. LS1 in the same position where we had the last interlock, in the last interlock circuit. So here, LS2. Now I cannot simulate this circuit because I can't simulate this LS2 and LS1. But you can understand if LS1 is pressed and LS2 is also pressed, their corresponding NC will be open. So if this is pressed, this will be open. If this is pressed, this will be open together. So if you press this switch together, these two will be open. And over both the contactors, forward two and reverse two will be off. 
However, this situation will not come in a normal process. But if manually someone press this together, which is totally uh, uh, should should be avoided, in that case, this too will be open up and your circuit will still be safe. Okay, so now you will be wondering how you will get another common. So you have to check your limit switch that it should have two common and two NO and two NC. In that case, you can prevent the circuit. Okay, this is the one way you can do that. So there another way could also be using some extra relays along with this limit switch and then using their NC in series to that, but that will be a little complicated because relay will be latched and your circuit will be messed up. But this is the easiest way if you can use the NC of your limit switches. So in this case, this is your main and this is your forward. That's your reverse. So right now, if you see if both switches are pressed, this is creating a problem. But practically, if both limit switches are pressed, these two will be open and these contactors will be off. I hope you understand this point. If you want, you can try this experiment, but make sure your main is off. Then you can take a trial of your circuit and you will notice if you press both the limit switch, the conductors will be off. Okay, this is one way to take a trial of your circuit. Just make sure your main is off in this case. Okay, so I hope you gained uh, some information from these videos. And if you have any doubt, you can post me a comment. I'm going to upload these drawings in the course lesson in the resource section. All right. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.